Um, today I'm here with Colin Harper. Um, Colin Harper is a writer for Coindesk, and he's actually done some uh, experiments that he's written about um, living on crypto and surviving solely off of Bitcoin. So I wanted to get Colin's insight on living on crypto in the United States. Um, Colin, how are you today? Doing well, Ricardo. Thanks for having me, man. Awesome. Thank you for joining me. Um, so let's get started. You've done living on Bitcoin experiments in both San Francisco, California and in Europe. Um, what were the biggest takeaways, the most important lessons that you've learned? Um, I think the biggest takeaways I had is that um, the adoption in at least where I went to in Europe and from what I can see in the United States in terms of um, merchants actually accepting some form of Bitcoin, either on chain or, or in Lightning. You know, I doubt very many of them are accepting on chain right now with the fees. But um, in, in where I was in Europe, which was uh, Berlin, I went to uh, uh, Prague and I went to Amsterdam and um, uh, the Bitcoin stad Arnhem in the Netherlands as well. Uh, all, all of these seem to have more merchants who accepted it. Um, and I think the, that's a lot of that is because most of those merchants were uh, kind of into the space. Um, in, in San Francisco, I had to rely on services like BitRefill or Paxville to buy gift cards to get around because there was just no one who accepted it. Um, so in, in, in Europe, I actually got to spend Bitcoin point of sale IRL a lot more. And in, in San Francisco, I got to only do it a handful of times. So I think the biggest takeaway was just one was very much like the physical mortar economy that I was supporting. And the other one was the virtual economy through uh, gift cards, basically. Okay, that's actually really surprising. Um, with all the crypto startups in San Francisco, I thought it would be easier to spend Bitcoin. Yeah, I did too, man. <laughs> uh, oh. Brandon, I, I think a helpful context too. I did this, this is the, the San Francisco experiment was in 2019 um, in January. So that was like at the pit of the bear market. The coin was at 3K. So um, for now it might be different. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure with the, with the bull market, um, a lot more people are open to accepting Bitcoin. So do you live on crypto um, at all, like in your everyday life? Or did you just do it for the experiments? Just for the experiment. I mean, I'll spend Bitcoin sometimes. Um, uh, so like I'll spend and replace if I see like a product from like, you know, a Bitcoin company that I like and I want to support them. Um, but uh, I, I, I haven't taken the jump to start uh, using things like Fold and BitRefill like some Bitcoiners have to like just make everyday expenditures by buying gift cards. Um, I've done it a few times, but I usually like to spend cash when I can. What is the crypto scene in Nashville like? You're a resident of Nashville, correct? Yeah, I, I lived in Nashville for a, a while. Um, I actually just recently moved to Denver, um, which has a little bit of a more thriving Bitcoin scene. Um, but uh, Nashville is pretty small. Bitcoin Magazine is based there, so that's pretty cool. Um, but it, it still, compared to places like New York or San Francisco, uh, doesn't have the same penetration or interest, I would say. Do any U.S. businesses accept Bitcoin or other cryptos that you're aware of now? Uh, I mean, now that Tesla has it on its balance sheet, I think that you're going to be able to like buy or pre-order or like make down payments for Teslas in Bitcoin, which is pretty substantial. Um, I'm trying to think of like other uh, businesses that accept it. I know MasterCard just came out with news saying that they're going to uh, in implement it as a point of sale option for their merchants for the merchants in their network. Um, PayPal does it now, so any PayPal merchant, but very few uh, businesses in, 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 Amer in, in the United States accept it. Um, in fact, I can't really think of any like big chains or franchises that do. Um, I, th I would imagine that would probably start changing in the next couple of years though. Is it easy to convert your Bitcoin to cash in the US? Yeah, it's pretty easy. I mean, you have so many on ramps at this point, like you have Cash App, you have PayPal. Um, besides those, you also have the crypto exchanges like Kraken, Coinbase, Gemini, um, you know, all of those good things. Um, it, it's becoming easier and easier. Um, now, liquidating for like actual cash, cash, like hard cash, is a little bit more difficult to come by, obviously. I think it's kind of like that in any place. Um, you have to find like, you know, someone in a trader group or a local Bitcoin meetup or use like something like uh, local, uh, local Bitcoins to do that. 
All right. Um, have you ever used BISC? I have used BISC. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that is awesome. Um, I would not recommend it to uh, all of my friends because it's definitely, you know, in its own class of exchanges. Um, that's also another way, um, obviously not as easy, but I think BISC, if you're a U.S. citizen, is probably the easiest way to get no KYC Bitcoin. Are there any advantages for people who live on crypto um, as opposed to just using uh, the U.S. financial system, which is, you know, world class? Yeah, I think for most people in the States, it doesn't make sense. Like, you know, if you're in the United States, like obviously dollar is king, so you should just use the dollar. Um, the one advantage is I think that like a, a, a Bitcoin circular economy um, for would, would have for some of these users is like with things like BitRefill or Fold um, or like Strike, all of these things, Lolly, right? Like you can get Bitcoin back for when you use them. Um, well, you use actual, uh, oh no, you do use Bitcoin. Yeah. Um, Oh, no, sorry, you use cash with Lolly. But um, anyway, uh, with all of these new things like Fold and BitRefill's got the, the sats back, these sats back rewards programs, I think, are going to be create incentives for Bitcoiners to, uh, you know, maybe be okay with spending some of their Bitcoin or just using something like Strike to immediately, uh, you know, uh, uh, deposit a USD balance and then not have to worry about spending Bitcoin. So they're just like basically spending and replacing and using that to buy uh, gift cards just to make a lightning network through bit refill or other services. I think that um, kind of creates a circular economy that has incentives for Bitcoiners to use it. And there may be some benefits there because they get Bitcoin back rewards from doing that. Um, but for most people in the States, you know, cash is just easier. Uh, one benefit I would say, um, maybe if you're a United States citizen and you're a nomad in your world, uh, Bitcoin's awesome, especially if you can find places with Bitcoin ATMs. Even places without Bitcoin ATMs, you can use services like BitRefill or Paxfill um, uh, or Fold to buy gift cards. And um, but uh, if you can, uh, this is one of my favorite use cases that Europe taught me. You can find a Bitcoin ATM. You know, you can circumvent, um, you know, having to go through currency exchange through either the airport or through a kiosk because they always screw you with fees. Um, so that is actually one benefit there, I would say, but that's only if you're traveling internationally. So you said you used gift cards a lot in your San Francisco experiment. What were the most useful bit refill gift cards for you um, when you were 100%, here? 100% 100% Uber, um, because with Uber, you can get transportation, you can get food. Um, I'd say I probably used that one more than anything else. Um, that and probably an Amazon gift card, because you can use that at Whole Foods. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't even aware of that. That's awesome. Aside from the United States and in the EU, have you tried living on crypto anywhere else? No, but I'd really like to go to Asia next. Um, I, I've, I've heard uh, for, through the grapevine that a lot of Southeast Asian countries have a lot of, uh, a lot of adoption, um, a lot of places to use it, a lot of Bitcoin ATMs. Uh, South America is another place that I really want to go. Um, because, you know, I think that that's a place where people are actually using Bitcoin because they have to. Um, and uh, I know that there's like there was a place in uh, El Salvador called uh, El, Punta in El Punta Manga called the Bitcoin Beach that has like a completely lightning based circular economy. That would be super cool to visit. So I think South America and Asia, if I ever continue this experiment, they'll be next. Awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing both of those. Um, Thanks. So. What are your thoughts on Lightning Network? You've, you've mentioned it a couple of times. Yeah, I like it. You know, it's, it's uh, every time I use it, I, I kind of get like shivers up my spine. Um, I've used it a lot. Uh, I used it a lot when I did the 2019. Uh, oh, I did the when I did the Bitcoin traveling in Europe at the end of 2019. I used it a lot, especially at the Lightning Berlin conference. Um, I think that there's a lot that needs to grow with it like I, I i think that um there's a lot that needs to be in the tech stack before it can scale i also think that the future of lightning for better or worse is in custodial uh um custodial software and lightning service providers kind of like bit refill you know having these companies that kind of do all the channel management in the background strike is another example and they provide easy user interfaces for everyone else um, to, uh, you know, to transact seamlessly and anyone else who wants to do it the non-custodial way, that's great for them. They can, they can have that option. Um, 
I think you're going to see it. I think you're going to see it improve a lot in the next couple of years. You know, after Taproot, there are some upgrades that are in in the works for Bitcoin that are going to make uh, Lightning even more accessible and uh, even more frictionless. Um, it, it's a matter of time, though. Uh, I think it's a sprint, and not a. It's it's a it's a marathon and not a sprint. Um, and I think once you see those features, you're really going to start seeing it take off because it's not. You know, if you're really do it from source, of course, it's really difficult, but onboarding people to Lightning is getting easier by the day. And I think that eventually you're also just going to see people push to the network because on-chain fees are going to become such a problem. So um, I'm pretty bullish on the network long term. I really look forward to seeing uh, kind of the kind of the new use cases that, you know, some people don't even think about, like lightning powered gaming and things like that. Sats back rewards and video games. Uh, the potential is endless. Yeah, yeah, I agree completely. Um, do you have a preferred Lightning wallet? So, say that one more time. Do you have a preferred Lightning wallet, a favorite? Um, I really like going back to the custodial thing. I, I'm pretty sure Blue Wallet is custodial for Lightning. I know it's not for on-chain, but uh, Blue Wallet's super good. Um, I, I recommend it for any newcomers who kind of want a little more control, but also a kind of seamless experience. Um, does not really count as a lightning wallet, but like strike to me is a huge game changer. Uh, um, having an easy fiat on ramp, but also can facilitate remittance payments that are settled instantly from, you know, one, one currency to another um, strike to me is a complete game changer. Um, besides those breeze Phoenix, all of those are all pretty good. Is there anything that I haven't asked you about living on crypto in the U S that you would like to add? No, except the only thing I would say, I don't think I really, ironically, and most maximalists would probably screech at me for this. It wasn't until I started spending Bitcoin that I really started to get it. Um, like the idea that I could hold a bank account, um, you know, outside of the state, uh, take it with me anywhere and then use that bank account to purchase, you know, gift cards or services, uh, regardless of jurisdiction, because the money is global. I mean, it clicked to me. It's like, you know, I could have no bank account at all. I could have no dollars, no euros, no anything. And if I had Bitcoin with me in any major city in the world because of these services, like BitRefill is built because of things that uh, Paxville is doing, that people were doing at Lightning Network, that people were doing, uh, that Jack Mallard is building at Strike. Um, because of all this confluence of all this developer activity and these entrepreneurs, um, there's this thriving circular economy that I can tap into wherever I have my Bitcoin, wherever I go. It's extremely powerful. And I think people in the United States don't really understand um, what it means to move your money off the grid um, and to survive on the fringes of the financial system. Um, and it's kind of scary for people who are comfortable, like you said, with a very powerful, and robust financial system like the US has, you know, um, it's a world class financial system, like you said earlier. But I think that once people take that leap and use something like Bitcoin, they can really see how empowering it can be. And um, I don't know, every time I use it, I just get shivers. So Colin, thank you very much for taking the time to answer my questions. Uh, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Ricardo. I had a great time. Thanks for having me. Indeed.